Have you ever wondered if it's possible to shoot between the gap and the masker? Or whether the Fast MT visor actually extends the hitbox of your face? Today we're going to be diving into top 10 common myths about helmets and debunking some stupid rumors within the community so you guys can be armed with knowledge. Jumping first into myth number one, is it possible to shoot between the eye slot of the masker helmet or the killer helmet? Now we tested this with a PM pistol with SP8 with a whopping one pen and shot many visors in testing. And as you can see here, it didn't matter whereabouts I aimed on the visor, we couldn't actually seem to get around through the gap. Now I did believe this was actually possible and it's really interesting to see how the visor and other sort of hitboxes actually interact. However, this myth itself is completely busted. It is not possible to shoot through the mask or eye slot. Myth number two is can you ricochet off a zeroed helmet? In this test, we took a fast MT, a 6B and multiple different other helmets and basically shot along the top of it after zeroing it. And what was really interesting to me is that once the helmet was zeroed, it didn't interact with the hitbox at all. And as you can see, when I fired within what would actually hit the helmet or ricochet or damage the helmet, didn't exist at all and the round would pass straight through until I interacted with the head hitbox itself, which was an instant kill. Showing that this myth is completely busted. It is not possible to ricochet off a zeroed helmet. Now myth number three, can you use a visor on a zeroed helmet? Using the same Fast MT we went in, and as you can see in the durability of the Fast MT being 40 out of 80, the helmet itself is actually 0 out of 40. Meaning that the helmet is completely zeroed, but the visor is in perfect condition. And as you can see here, the visor itself is actually working in perfect condition. That you can actually use a visor on a zeroed helmet. Now for myth 4, is it possible for a visor in the up or off position to stop around? As you can see, we have the masker here and we have the visor up and we tested this in multiple different angles, which you'll see. But you could see that my shot landed square on the visor. But what was really interesting is when the visor is in the up position, it doesn't interact at all, allowing rounds to pass through. And even when you shoot it side on, and as you can see the impact very clearly, it didn't actually affect the durability of the visor at all. The meaning that this myth is busted. When the visor is off, it stops existing within the head hitbox of the head. Another popular misconception is the slap plate fully protects the front of the head and the mount for the NVGs doesn't actually affect the hitbox. As you can see, that's two rounds directly in the center on the NVG mount. And if we look at the slap plate, it's completely untouched. And you can see the scoring on the fast MT with two missing durability. This is actually super interesting, showing me that the slap doesn't actually fully protect the head. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, make sure you let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see busted next. Maybe some common misconceptions about armor or something. But for now, this myth is busted. It is not possible to fully protect the head with the slap, showing that the front of your head where the NVG mount is, is only affected by the armor class of the helmet. Now for myth six, do visors extend the hitbox of the head? In other words, when the visor is down, does it make the hitbox of your visor extend past? And as you can see here, anytime that I wasn't fully in line with the face, the round would pass through the visor, completely ignoring it. Now this is actually really interesting because this is different to how helmets operate. And as you can see, the round is passing directly through the visor up until the point where it's in line with the player's face or eyes. So you can see I gradually get left here by millimeters until I'm in line with his eyes and that's when it starts to interact with the visor itself. Now this is really interesting to me because I was actually under the same misconception as you guys. I believe that the visor did interact, but you can see only when the round is in line with the head hitbox does it actually interact. If you guys have any questions about this video, I actually make these live five days a week on Twitch. Feel free to swing by and ask any questions or maybe get feedback on what you saw here today. But for now, this myth is busted. Visors do not extend the hitbox of the face. Myth number seven, can you damage armor or helmets after death? In other words, if the armor is on the ground or on a body, is it possible to interact with it and do damage prior? As you can see, the armor here is 
and after firing at it a few times with the PM, the armor is actually untouched. Just to be safe, we also switched to the Val and did the same thing. Once again, the armor was untouched. We also tested this with visors and helmets on the ground and also on the body. And as you can see, it looks like it's interacting with the helmet, but the truth is the durability of the helmet was unchanged. Showing me that this myth is busted. It is not possible to damage armor after death or on the ground. Another popular misconception is, do high cuts actually affect the, the in-game sound? Starting off with a high cut helmet, we also did some control testing here firing off a Mosin and then checking the peak decibels. Now, obviously, the lower the number here in negative decibels, the quieter. And negative seven decibels was the perceived sound for me in this scenario without ears. And that was with a high cut helmet, but it was the same with a mid cut. In other words, the Bastion, which doesn't offer ear protection. But when we switch to the ULAC, we actually start to notice that the ULAC with ear protection actually affects the sound here from negative 7 to negative 10.5. And even further with the BNTI, which fully covers the ears at negative 12. Meaning that this myth is actually confirmed. High cuts not only give you the ability to put on ears, but they also do not affect the sound in this game. Is it possible to survive a headshot? Now this one is actually a point of contention and a lot of people don't actually understand this one but it's actually only two rounds in the game that it's possible to survive a headshot when penetrating, and that's 7 and 39 in APSX. Because of their lack of flesh damage, 37 and 35 being close to the 35 max durability of the head. What's interesting though is what really needs to be explained is that sometimes armor absorbs a large percentage of the flesh damage and sometimes it doesn't, regarding to how high the armor level is itself. So something like the out in here you can see even though the APSX round is actually going into his head, he's actually surviving quite easily. Now what's happening here is the closer the penetration is to the armor class, the more damage is absorbed. And you can see that it is possible to survive a headshot even though it should technically go straight through and kill him because a lot of the damage is being absorbed by the Alton. Meaning this myth is confirmed. With certain rounds on certain helmets, it is possible to survive a headshot. And for the last myth here today, for staying to the end, can you put NVGs in your secure container? Now, unfortunately, I finished the game here and I have a Kappa container. But what you're going to need here is a Diamond Age Bastion helmet and you're going to need the additional armor plate. And what's interesting is the night vision goggles actually mount to the armored plate, not the helmet itself. But the armored plate hasn't been coded properly in the game and allows you to actually put this in your secure container, but not in the Kappa container. So if you have anything else, whether that be an Alpha, a Beta, or anything in between like an Epsilon or a Gamma, you can actually put these in your, in your secure container using the Diamond Age Bastion additional plate. You can see from screenshots here of people within my community that have done this with the Diamond Age Bastion. So that means that this works with all MVGs mounted to the Bastion plate and for all containers, discluding the Kappa. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this breakdown of some common misconceptions about helmets, or you'd like to see more of this sort of video in the future, let me know in the comments down below, and also subscribe for future videos just like this one. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next one.